All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fabs in the house, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in the house with the Frank Fisher Fury here with me for a review. I'm gonna analyze the look, the sound, and the feel of this bad boy. But first of all, I need to say a huge thank you to my buddy Skyler for sending this beauty right over here. Look at this. It comes uh, with this. Uh, I don't know if it comes with this. I think uh, this is like from uh, Simus. I don't know, I don't have details on this taco pouch, but for sure looks pretty good and uh, handmade. But inside that pouch, we find uh, this thing, which is uh, something, guys, look at this, uh, insane. Uh, it's something truly, truly spectacular. This is a very expensive knife, probably in the four or five thousand dollar range. So it's something uh, over the top. It's uh, also obviously a custom knife made by uh, Frank Fisher. Uh, this thing, it's a. Uh, it's a beast of a knife. Uh, let's uh, just quickly check uh, like the size first. You have um, a uh, 3.25 inch long blade with maybe like 3.21 inch uh, cutting edge, uh, 4.2 inches for the handle. Overall length is gonna be 7.25. I just wanna show you a couple of uh, options right over here. I need to take out some fancy uh, comparison knives for this fella. So we're gonna start with the lower end, uh, small Sebenza 21 and large Sebenza 21 from Chris Reeve Knives. I wanna show you a couple of uh, Holt blade works. Here you get to see the haptic and right up there, the Spectre. And you can see the Fisher is pretty much uh, a little bit smaller than the Haptic, I would say, but pretty much same ballpark, definitely smaller than the Spectre. And then I've got to show you a couple of Shirogorov because of course, uh, uh, you know, why not? Uh, you get to see F3B from Custom Division and Neon NL also from Custom Division. The Fury is again, kind of like a little bit smaller than the Neon in this case. And then, I mean, I have to show you a couple of uh, uh, custom like uh, nicely dressed and right here you see the Lambert uh, Augustus and right over here uh, Peter Rassenti Nirvana uh, that's the number four uh, fourth edition so you get to see that this Fisher is not uh, uh, like a big boy I mean especially compared to this Augustus which is a beast so this is like more uh, carryable size more uh, um, EDCable uh, compared to the other fellas um, so this is a very interesting piece, guys. There's a lot of things uh, going on here. I mean, the uh, just the frame. I mean, it's a titanium frame lock, but check out like the how its uh, dual tone has been rendered. So look at this uh, blacked out uh, uh, contoured surface right over here. You get uh, uh, the um, these speed holes with the, they have a little rim around that is uh, showing the raw titanium underneath and it's a gorgeous gorgeous detail the uh the flats like all of the perimeter are satin all the way around look at that and and you see like what is very interesting is the transition from the black to the satin is very very regular i was able to like upon inspection i was able to find just a little point that i can't find it anymore to, to show you that ah, that's maybe a little bit but no it's like very well made guys uh, the, the the finish of this handle is just spectacular so uh there is a very very subtle chamfering going on on the perimeter the same thing goes on on the inside on the inside you don't have any internal skeletonization that's going to reflect a little bit on the weight and then you get this uh, one finger groove and one uh, smaller and one wider so uh, this is pretty good for the ergonomics because you're gonna have one finger here and mainly two here uh, the pinky kind of can rest at the end here but something like you see in my case but if you have like a smaller hand i'm sure you're gonna be able to fit these three fingers in this larger groove uh, which is uh, making like a nice ergo on this uh, uh, bad boy and then guys check this backspacer because uh, first look looks like just oh yeah it's okay it's a titanium backspacer but you can actually see the layers right so uh, this is uh, why i mean this is a dama core uh, backspacer in fact you see the core but because of the nature of the sun my uh, dama core you don't really 
you can't really appreciate uh, you know the jacket and the, the uh, layers uh, um, that uh, com that make the jacket and the core so you just see like this line which is by the way pretty centered with the gears like the, the geared uh, uh, stuff going on on the actual spacer so that's why you don't really see it because this part looks like shiny that's the core it's not a dual tone finish back spacer this is a san my core dama core uh, spacer sorry uh, geared which reaches this point and you cannot get to snag that tip so it's right there the blade looks uh, slightly favoring show side just a smidge it's safely recessed uh, of course i can't take this fella apart uh, this uh, is like obviously like a, a custom pivot uh, um and uh, so i'm not gonna try to do anything on this but just looks a little bit off and that's uh, probably one little thing that i have to, to to point out about this fella so i don't know how how complicated would be to take this guy apart i'm assuming it's not that much uh, as long as you have the right key the right tool to take this fell apart but uh, beside that looks pretty simple like three handle screws uh, uh, for the construction so not not too crazy you have this pivot guys which is just take a second for like to, to admire the, the the mokutai color the gear the star pointy uh in the in the middle and these actual look at this i believe that's the zirkutai inlaid pivot which you can find on both sides when you get closer look at this guys yeah i can't go closer than that that is the this is the level of this pivot guys it's insane one of the nicest pivots uh, around a hundred percent um and then you get uh, of course there's no uh stainless steel lock face uh, stabil um insert nor you have a stabilizer and uh, if you deploy this blade you feel it's not really lock stick i, I can't call this lock stick it's more like a like the shiro stick it's that kind of lock stick that you find in some shiro which is not really a lock stick it's just like a feeling it's that, that doesn't really make any any noise just a little bit but it's a it's more like a feel like it, it just uh, there's a little bit more resistance uh, when you disengage the lock part so i wouldn't really call this lock stick uh, uh, for example uh, this uh, uh, f3b is the same thing you just move it out and just a little bit of noise it makes like this so something to mention but nothing crazy i think this with a, with a little bit more of use i'm sure skylar used this one uh, but a little bit more use is gonna break in it's gonna go away i'm pretty sure also you have uh, uh, to check out guys this pocket clip so really well made it's a little bit stiff so it's not much springy tension and that's because look at this it's a sun my clip you see the core right over here you see right there and that's the jacket that you see very very cool nice entrance uh, a little bit stiff uh, to the um you know in the pocket because it's a little bit too short it's uh, also uh, resting on like if you see maybe from this angle it's resting you see on this side not on the lock bar so that is good it's nicely it's like 3d contoured hidden screw so it's screwed in right there from the inside um tip up carry only of course and it's obviously not reversible it's just gonna live on this side right there and then guys you have the pleasure to meet this dama core blade you know it's a sun my uh, configuration with the jacket around a core so uh, the idea is to have you know like embellished jacket and a stronger core uh, to perform the tasks so there's no jimping going on over here you have just a, a very unique uh, uh, configuration very very nice grind you have like you see this it's kind of like flowing down like following this line and then here harpoons up but the swedge already started right over here at the back and just sweeps down to the tip 
And then, guys, look at this. Two sets of recurve micro bevels on this primary hollow grind uh, bevel. It's uh, really, really nice. Also, the sharpening job, it's very well done. The only thing is at the heel of the blade, you see the uh, actual plunge grind, it's not as recessed as I would like, for example, in this case. So you get to see that the thickness of the blade just uh, thickens uh, at the end because the plunge grind is not that recessed, but it's not a huge deal. Then you have a, a sharpening choil right over here. So, but when you sharpen, you see, you have to stop right there, right at the beginning of the plunge grind. You see, right there when the plunge grind begins. So you have to be careful when you sharpen this one. And also because it's like a recurve, a double recurve. So yeah, you need to be, uh, knowing what you're doing and then you don't have any chamfer around the uh, flipper tab but you have a little bit of jimping which is uh, pretty good if you want to do like a push button or if you prefer to do a light switch uh, uh, deployment method of course there's no billboarding going on on this blade because why would you ruin something this beautiful you, you don't so just leave it like that and you just admire uh, these uh, pretty cool layers uh, surrounding this core on this on my blade really really good and then guys uh, you can hear this fella very deep and, and decisive uh, click uh, clicking sound when you close it when you open it it's very subdued it's not like uh, loud by any means when you close it it's a tink dump and thwack and tink very subdued very very low volume, not loud whatsoever. Uh, let's quickly check the weight on this beauty right over here. Um, because there's no skeletonization, the core is a little bit uh, on the thick side. Look at that, 4.99 ounces in your pocket. So this has quite some heft, but of course, this is a, a substantial knife. So I would be surprised if uh, it would be too light. Also something that I want to show you guys is the uh, lock bar cut out. Look at this. You get to see five grooves over here. This is amazing. It's like, uh, it's beautiful. It's like a radiator kind of looking thing. And it's gorgeously uh, milled, beautifully done. Uh, instead of just doing like one pass, you know, there's like five passes, nicely executed. Nice little touch going on right over there. Uh, and then uh, you have uh, like th the handle, like, I mean, it's very well done. I mean, there's a pretty nice grip, like I can comfortably do two fingers here, one here. The pinky is, you know, it's gonna be a little bit here. So I feel a little bit of handle is missing, but still, if I just, you know, crank my fingers up like that in a, in a secure grip like this, it's great because you have this space here for your thumb, which you feel the harpoon starting here. So, you know, you get to stop and you can kind of like, you know, rest your thumb in this spot and just go. And like, for example, you need to, to shred cardboard. Uh, if you use like a recurve when the cardboard is like here, you're just gonna, you know, tend to stay at the center of the, of the, the, the edge. So that's, why recurve can work in some situation better than just like a straight edge and um, it's uh, it's a very it's a very solid grip that's for sure i wish it was a little bit bigger for my hands but feels absolutely solid like this backspacer these thick slabs are making you feel this thing like a rock in the hand really there's nothing moving it's well built it's well put together there is no nothing rattling if i check for gaps misalignment things that are not flush uh, uh, no I, I can't see anything it's very well put together there's a, as i said just a little bit of this very very light stick a little bit of the blade not being centered but beside that i i, I really i really cannot uh, find uh, some defect. I can understand if you say this is not for me, this is not my style. I can understand that. But guys, this is a well put together knife, 100%. It's running on bearings. And the action is this. I mean, I didn't do anything to this knife. It's just this smooth. So look at this. The blade falls gliding under its own weight in a, in a very natural and uh, pleasant way. Look at this. Beautiful. 
very aggressive look going on over here very gentle action i really like it i'm starting you know even to like these speed holds i'm not a fan usually of speed holds but in this case i i understand i i, I like it it's something that is growing on me really really cool uh, knife i'm very very grateful to be able to check uh, this kind of material out so skylar again thanks uh, uh, one more time and uh, i really hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching Please don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned.